Doesn't need to be able to read over here. Go nuts. Bugs or misbehave between go and see go. So this is a go nuts list. Um, it's looking for some debugging. I'm not going to answer that one right now. Proposal error handling with else catch. So this is something important about the go nuts group. Is that it's a place to um, test out proposals for Go if you want to change the language. Uh, whatever your favorite language is probably important for you to to figure out how to, to make changes to it. Python had a rather involved um, R, was it RFC proposal or request for proposal or something. I think that's a bad fit. Magic essential. Let's see what they're trying. Oh, they're trying to do if else. So people in Go don't use else. Uh, let's see what would happen here. Oh, they're trying to break out the the air condition. Yeah, that's never happening. This is this is anti Go. Most um, idiomatic Go these days. Hey, good morning, guys. Most idiomatic Go does not have um, else statements. So, if you want to ask me about that later, I can talk about it. This is somebody trying to sell me LED parts uh, from China directly because I put that out there like five, six years ago because I was trying to order parts. It's actually a lot cheaper if you order a bulk of parts through Alibaba or whatever if you want to get parts. So I'm deleting that. Pimgo auto-completion. Oh, this is probably just somebody yelling. Um, oh, no, that's different. Anybody, my question was not meant to criticize Vimgo for Go people for Go or Go PLS, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's no auto completion in Go and there in the in the Vimgo thing, and there won't be. It's probably an interesting thread. I know some of some of you have asked for auto completion. Uh, the Go community tends to not like auto completion for all the reasons I've talked about in the past. Um, usually, primarily that you can search out the answer much faster uh, with a text-based web browser and get full information about it. And if you need to search out the 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 syntax, it's pretty easy to do it. Stream summary can die. Controller's knowledge of your industry and system software. Ah, uh, that's probably an ad. Yeah, because I get this stuff all the time. Because I listed a CEO on my, in my, um, uh, my LinkedIn. Hmm. Lots of follows here. Oh, thanks for the follows and the subscribes. Appreciate that. Um. Appreciate all those a lot. Thank you. Welcome, Rainbow, to the morning edition. Uh, CV, this is an interesting thing. So this is another reason to be on these lists. Um, this is where Linux was announced when it was first made. So it, the, the tradition in technology is to announce new proposals and new new things, new cool things on the new, the mailing lists. And the mailing lists are another are called news groups, UUCP news groups. And they have largely just become Google groups. So if you're interested in a language, I really suggest that this is how I learned. It's one of the main reasons, way and ways I learned when I started up and then I just started answering questions for everybody on there. Um, this is a proposal, it looks like, to... Oh, this is interesting. They have a live demo even. Oh, wow, that's very impressive. This is not the kind of stuff that gets posted to Twitter, by the way. So this is why it's important that if you want to be a technology professional, you learn how to um, keep track of stuff and, and follow it. So I'm going to try this real quick. I have another. Oh, wow. Pandoc 2.9.2. Oh, my gosh. Command line C view, it's called. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Um, wow, look at this. Ooh, please have VI bindings. No, you're telling me I have to click. Oh, it is. That's interesting. Look at this, guys. Look at this. C view. We're going to have to do a thing on this one. I can't forget to do this. This is... I wonder if it's based on on uh, T view. 
I have a feeling it is. They, these terminal, I have a saying about Go. Go comes out with terminal frameworks about as fast as, as the web comes out with web frameworks. Because Go is the natural go-to language, huh? For anything based on the terminal because it's so robust, so easy to write and so not Python. And it has a lot of direct, um, you know, effect for this kind of thing. Look at this. Holy cow. This has got to be an extension of TView. I have a feeling they ripped TView off, but I can't prove it. So I'm going to go back. Man, I'm going I'm to definitely bookmark that. I'm going to make a to-do to on that one. So to-do, research CView. So here you go. This morning's coffee has already been worth it. I just found out about a fantastic new library for terminal emulation, for terminal development, for terminal UIs. And why? Because I'm subscribed to the Go list. And, I'm gonna, and I filter through this stuff. We'll go back to the Pandoc thing in a bit. Um, I gotta, I wanna read the origin and story of this. Let's see, apps of mine which use this library, Diddy, Music Player, uh, Gmenu, Linux Desktop Launcher, ADBFM. It's funny because as more web developers move to Go, you start to see more of these things. Uh, source of the pre-fork. Oh, it is TView. Fork reason. Ooh. I want to see why for it because it is definitely TView. You notice how this is a markdown file? This is why I think learning markdown is so important because it's how you communicate if you're a technologist today. Um, why fork? Revo, the creator and sole maintainer of TView, explains his review, reviewing emerging process, blah, blah, blah. He states that he does not have the necessary time or interest to review, discuss, or merge pull requests. The project is quite low in priority. He doesn't. He do, it doesn't generate any income for me, and unfortunately, review issues. Blah blah blah. But some other people submitting large PRs, which will cost me many hours to review. Interesting. A lot, a lot of a lot of maintainers give up on that. That's what um, Inkscape was. But lastly, I'm one of the I'm one of the ones who ends up maintaining his code. I have to be 100% behind it. I have to understand it, and 100% able to. This is, I talked about this last night, and I'm going to make a video about this. Um, all the bad parts about GitHub uh, video. What's wrong with GitHub open uh, PR process and git contributions? So the, there's a serious problem that nobody wants to talk about because it's it makes you sound like you're against the process of open source, which you're not. But this is a perfect reason. In fact, I I just I just forked a project two days ago for the same reason. CView aims to solve these issues by increasing the number of project maintainers and allowing code changes which may be outside of TView scope. The fact that they already have an SSH sample for you to go try things out uh, means that I'm behind them. So let's see, throttle size handling, add support for display text next to checkbox, move mouse support. See, they added mouse support and I hate mouse support, but it's not, not bad. Add window size change behavior and, and like for example, sometimes you're drinking your coffee and you're like, ah, oh, sometimes I wish I didn't have to use the keyboard. Handle NC code 3934. Ooh. See, this is this is all the reason I just needed to use TView. I mean CView. I'm done using TView. I'm really, really, really glad I got this 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 note. Because I would have gone on using TV and I would have had to it would have been compatible, but I would have had to do a lot of other work. So already this morning, I'm feeling very satisfied by the fact that I went through the news and I read this. I mean, I just saved myself a ton of time and I've, I've now I'm able to share it with other people. So super jazzed about that. In fact, I'm putting that in the weekly news um, and I may figure out a way to publish my, my weekly news emails. Um, URL is not on Google. Okay, so I normally don't go into these in depth, but I want to show people. So this is a news group. And the only purpose of this news group is to complain about sites that are broken with JavaScript that don't work in search. Okay, so if you really want a true idea of what some of these JavaScript frameworks are doing to the web, and I'm not just blaming React, all of them are bad in some way, then this is it. This is it. The last image indicates that Google has detected the URL's content as a duplicate of another and decided to rank and blah, blah, blah. Like, so like every week, I got to tell you, the volume has gone down. So that's a good thing. But the volume on this list, when it goes up, that means somebody is really breaking the web in general. 
So I just kind of keep a tab on that. I'm going to trash that. There's some more follows. Thank you very much. Good morning, Zeros. Um, Cross and uh, Gray, the Bite Man. God, it was so much fun last night. Thanks for joining, everybody. You guys are fantastic. Um, and Blues, hopefully your school project goes well. Um, I am following um, a bunch of academia on yoga, which uh, I don't download unless it's um, really, really good. I, I, I go on off the deep end in yoga when I, when I went through my training and try to research everything about where it came from. It turns out it's just another um, philosophy and religion. It's really, um, but, you know, has a lot of practical applications. All right. How am I doing on time? 10.51. Okay. I have about, I have about 40 minutes. What are the most interesting use cases for web ops? This is a, a core question I'm not interested in. Another subscribe thing. I mean, uh, follow. Thank you very much. Um, CData. Uh, this Chad uses ProtonMail. Of course this Chad uses ProtonMail. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's the only thing to use. Um, when I found out about it and I, I wasn't, the, you know what? It was one of my people, one of my good friends here. Let me know about it. Hmm. I tried to denota for about two weeks and was getting too banned and it seemed a little bit too hackery for me. So, hmm. Forgive my oatmeal chewing. C data. What is this? It's another go nuts list thing. Hmm. This is more of a support question, so I'm going to skip it. Um. Kitty joined last night. Hey, there you are, Frust Bites. I noticed you changed your name. Good job. Thank you for joining, following. And it's my live notification. Uh, a little, little tip here. This is actually being addressed to, it's being generated by my agent um, account. So, sometimes, it was, an, it was like a, a benefit I wasn't planning on. So, if you add, if you add a, if you add another account, so because you want to make your own agent or bot, if you if you let it, um, it it will notify you. So if it goes to the same email, yeah. The key pass, I can't. I only have forty minutes, so I'm sticking to the news this morning. Sorry, guys. Um, and uh, maybe later, a proposal error handling with else. This is this is a conversation about changing the syntax. I've already talked about it. It's gonna fail. No one's going for it. It's not even a good proposal. It's somebody who doesn't understand Go. Hmm. Or they shouldn't. They don't understand idiomatic Go. At least idiomatic Go doesn't use else statement. There's jokes in the Go community about if you're using an else statement, you're coding it wrong. And if you think about it hard in your programmer, you'll understand why I don't really want to talk about that right now. Um. I only have 40 minutes to get through a lot of news. Uh, quick union slower than quick find array lookup. That's a support question. No, why isn't why isn't there strings reverse string function? That is a debate I don't want to get into. Uh, you can make your own, by the way. You just have to pass it a function. Question about the zero value design. Why pointer? This is all people trying to understand Go who coming from other languages. Um, in, in Go, I'll just say Go comes with really great um, default zero values as opposed to them being empty which means that you don't get as nearly as many nil, null pointer errors and stuff like that, like you do in C. So in C, you, you, you die all the time if you don't de, you know, de, define a null value. So in Go, you get free null values. So if you just declare a variable, it automatically gets, like for example, if it's an int, you get a zero automatically. If it's a string, you get an empty string automatically. Am I going somewhere after this or is, or is, it, or is it, do you have what work? Yeah, I, 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 I work. Let me just fill you in here. Um, it's not that I'm trying to be mean. <laughs> I, I just, this is my schedule. This is the only schedule that will be published for me. Um, this is when I work. So I have people here um, uh, from 12 my time, which is in about an hour. Yep. Uh, and I still I have, you know, I have to get ready and stuff. So it takes me about 15, 20 minutes to get ready. So I only have about 40 minutes left to go over news and I'm kind of short on time. So, and then at tonight, I'll be going over stuff again, but I've noticed that every time I try to code on the weekend, it just doesn't happen. So if you want to see me live coding, I've tried to, I'm not, I'm not going to make a schedule about it, but anytime I'm going to do live coding, it's going to be during the day. 
So there's two things I'm going to do during the day, like on the Mondays, you know, Mondays at nine or 10 in the morning here. Um, I'll be, I'll be live coding and I'll be making like structured videos uh, during the day. And then when I have my sessions, I'll be doing a lot of my, my silly lame things that don't take a lot of mental energy uh, because, or a mic, because I'm, I can't, I can't, I, my priority is being with the people who are here, but often they're, they're doing their own thing. So I have a little bit of time to, to code on things or to, to tweak things. So, so that's, that's just, I just wanted to kind of give an overview of what's going on. That'll, that'll all be saved in this video. I will, I'm going to make, uh, this is another reason I want to just talk about news right now, because if I continue to talk about news and I can, I can, you know, I can highlight it and publish it like I did with my discord responses, and then you guys can go back and, and digest it. Um, I'm deleting my live stream videos immediately after they're, they're done. So like last night's video is dead already. And, um, I'm considering opening those up for subscribers only, but I just don't like having that kind of free form, um, uncensored information <laughs> video out there. All right. So let's go back. It looks like, uh, it looks like, uh, oh, Pandoc 2.92 got released. What's changed? CSV is now an import format. You know what's happening? So this is really important news. Pandoc has, you can, there's three things that have happened with Pandoc in the last two, three months that really, really suggest a significant change. And actually it makes it much better than Hugo. So the smart people at Pandoc have decided to move the emphasis towards data-driven sites, which means, and this is the thing that I, this is the very thing that I was, um, um, I was reading, uh, this is the thing that I was, I was actually, I made in my, my GitHub in Hugo, my most popular uh, repo um, is about converting using a data-driven site Hugo tutorial on on how to link data to type this entire tutorial um, on on github which is you can find it on their site too is all about how to use Hugo to create a data-driven site it's also the reason that I forked Hugo uh, and made not forked but made Hugo not and wanted to create a data-driven uh, static site generator in which case is that what is a data-driven static site generator so static site generators make sites out of content out of markdown out of yaml out of structured data I call all of that knowledge source and so what happens is that um, no, nothing so if you do it right your static site generator could just be a way of generating data views static data views in kind of the database sense and and um you know it if you don't understand data science or data i mean not not data a database science i suppose then you, it's kind of hard to explain that but but so this is this is really really fascinating and this is even more reason to look at pandoc so the the last major changes to pandoc have all been p partials that are much much more and partials that are associated with data so you can associate a partial with a data type it's just super cool. Nothing else does that. Not, not you know, Hugo, not Jekyll, not, not whatever. Gatsby, does, Gatsby tries to do that, but they force you to use GraphQL to look up all the stuff. It's completely stupid. And um, they might have removed that since then. But um, but so now this last change in 2.92 means they're just continuing to do it again on this path. It makes me think so that it makes me think that you know JGM here, John McFarland, um, is actually creating databases and stuff. In YAML, which is what I'm also doing kind of organically, and he's using his template system to generate, you know, student reports and stuff that are that are views of the database, which is exactly my biggest beef with Hugo when I started. That's why I started. That's why I created FADB. It's why I got involved with the Tommel project. It's why it, all of that. And so for the Pandoc group to, to sort of indicate that they're moving towards data driven static site generation is just phenomenally cool because that means that you can generate um, you can generate digestible data in PDF, in LaTeX, in Web, in, in, in Kindle, in EPUB and whatever from your data set. And the fact that they now support CSV as a data input format, it's just a matter of time before before they support, you know, some sort of like SQLite or something else where you can just generate all your static site out of the database. And and just think about there is nothing that's doing that right now. You know, the closest thing is Gatsby. And and you still have to set up all the stuff because it in order for it to do it, it has to crawl it as if it were a web crawler. It's really stupid. I mean it's really stupid. It was, it was the, the idea is that it's being data driven, but the way that they're implementing it is completely brain dead. Um, so instead of a, of a single JATS output file, we now have JATS archive, JATS publishing, and JATS uh, auto authoring. Um, let's see here. Okay. It is now easier to create Lua filters than filter element lists. Yep. 
I think I need to start adding Lua back to, as a language. Lua, Lua filters are super cool. And I think I might just need to own it and just say, hey, I need to make my modifications to Pandoc as Lua. That means there'll be three languages involved in the README WordPress project I'm making, but that's fine. Fix some regressions from 2.7, lots of bug fixes improvement, API changes, text.pandoc.readers at CSV, exports now as a CSV. Let's see. Um, export HTML5 attributes. Oh, God, this is awesome. I almost want to reply on the list. I don't think I should, but I have kind of a, I have kind of a, tentative relationship with John. He's been, he answered me directly in email when I was working on the BaseML project because I wanted to simplify it and make a, make a streamable version of, um, of Markdown as opposed to one that requires two passes and requires memory. But I, I do believe now it was, it was misplaced because it was based on a, a constrained memory requirement. But now we see ARM yesterday, um, all of the news was about uh, that came to me was about all the IOT devices and how powerful they are and how, how much memory they have and how ARM, um, how ARM is the new standard. So, so the, the, the movement is towards devices, even at the smallest scale that have tremendous amount of power and memory. Um, the entire peg parsing, the, the, the parsing expression grammar movement is moving towards things that have more memory. So they can do unlimited look ahead, unlimited look behind because they load the whole thing in memory. So, so it seems that, and, and there's no limit to memory. Memory seems to be like it's going to be going up and up and up. So any effort that I may have had to reduce the memory footprint and to think about parsing JSON uh, in a base way without double passing it um, the way this does, it was somewhat misguided, I think, at this point, you know, looking back, because, because we actually have tons of memory. For people to even entertain peg grammars like Guido on Python means that, you know, the world has accepted that we have memory to use. And so this idea of like, oh, the devices are going to be so tiny and they're going to be so Arduino-y that, that there's never going to be any memory. And I think it was misguided. And I think that the whole um, idea of not being able to double pass um, formats uh, is, 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 is not valid. And so based on that, I'm okay with accepting um, more, more of Pandoc's um, parsing strategy and to use Pandoc itself. Um, I don't, I do believe that for simplification cognitively, um, that you should probably use a simplified version of Pandoc instead of the full version because it's extremely powerful. It's got a lot of stuff in it and that can be overwhelming to somebody. So I have a simplified version of Markdown that I can teach in 20 minutes and then we can move on to that. But the fact that, that, that Pandoc allows you to use CSV, JSON, YAML, and TOML, um, is just confirmation confirmation to me that 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 the one of the modern technology foundations in my skill stack stuff is very very valid and i really need to flesh this out so so here we go um knowledge as source csv json yaml what was the announcement about today they now support csv which is just flat tables in database parlance um they now support that and they allow you to um to, to generate uh, web content from it. So, so that, that is phenomenal. That is, that is another bit of news that I'm really, really glad I opened it. In fact, um, I need to blog about this right away or I will forget. So I'm just going to blog it real quick. Okay. So here we go. How much time I got? Okay. The movement. Let's see. With Pandoc 2.9.2 uh, release, it is really clear that the project is moving toward a data centric design and architecture. This is phenomenally cool. Um, it is consistent with with the reason I left Hugo forming Hugo not and FADB and uh, contributed to the Tomo project. Uh, as
as well as the main idea behind uh, my Hugo tutorial that helps use data that helps let's see let's help that helps um, it helps create data centric data centric data driven uh, Hugo sites and I'm gonna link this one here um, so it's all about the data and guess what as far as I know Pandoc is on the right path and frankly Hugo is not Hugo is still stuck in blog land and that's not the end solution the end solution is a tool that will take data and generate views as in database view that are static and can be published in whatever form that is the future of of all of these static site generators and I don't um, they're not blog engines okay so I can let that thought go and move on I have 1106 I don't think I'm too bad um, there's my schedule music take a sip of coffee here hmm Architecture diagrams in YAML, you kidding me? Wow, this is why I have a stream. Can I pay you? Hmm. I'm gonna put that in the list. Hmm. What language is this? That's phenomenal, Frostbites. I know. You know, Frost, it makes you really appreciate the, the architects over at Twitch, right? Closure? That's fine. Just curious. I'm gonna, put a, I'm gonna take a thumbtack on that. I need some time. It's exhausting being a technologist sometimes. It's so hard to keep up. I mean, think of me, I've got like three ideas to go look at right now, just from you guys. Where is my, here we go. Well, you might say. Yeah, we can pick that one up. Okay. Well, let's read the next few things. Hopefully I can, I can find another gem in there. Um... Now, this is what you have to do if you want to be a tech. You've got to keep up. It's like this, it's like reading the Sunday paper. You can put it off onto a single day if you want. Um, you can do it every day. I try to do it every day. In fact, I'm going to change my notifications. I have probably 50 to go through today. I'm not going to get through them all. Um, and this is, you know, outside of the coding requirements and outside of the four hours a week that I teach. So this is why I'm just got my email like wide open like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's just read my email together. <laughs> Who does that, right? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, what, are, what finalizers are missing? Um, I don't want to get into this. Let's see. I don't think the analysis is correct. IRC. Uh, so the guarantees. Yeah, this is a debate I don't want to enter into. So not, kind of irrelevant to me. Walk away from the computer. This is these are. I'm kind of giving up what I follow. Um, I'm, I'm going to indulge in a Reddit about Mr. Robot. We talked last night about that. Am I telling myself to stop watching Mr. Robot? Elliot, listen to me. Walk away from the computer. <laughs> yeah, I should just put him in the... I should, I should put Mr. Robot in the background sometime. I've watched it so many times on rerun. There is... The thing about Mr. Robot is it keeps on giving. I mean, it's kind of dark, but the backgrounds, the stuff that's in there is like... They're so, so dense. There's tons to go find again. So, I'll have to do that for fun sometime. Get some great fan art in that Reddit. Western Governors Universe. So these Google Alerts are things that I have to, actually later, I need to, I need to change my Google Alerts. I need to make a to-do about this. Um, to-do. Um, 
change Google alerts to once a week. Right now they're once a day. And it gets a little bit verbose. Verbose means talkative, like chatty. Both words that are used in tech a lot. Uh, Western WGU. Most of the news on WGU is always, hey, here's all the people who got, um, who got in. Nemo student earns a degree from WGU. There you go. Salt Lake City. That's where they're founded. This is a Missouri student. So the news is out of Salt Lake City. I get it. Uh, okay. I'm reading here. Awesome. Frost, I'm really going to look at it later. I'm going to finish the news today. Um, Sabrina Pearson of Hartley earned a Bachelor's of Science nursing degree. Great. So it's almost always, it's almost, I think they have a good marketing department because they're always publishing who's graduating. Uh, to be fair, they have like a, I think they have like a 30 or 40% dropout rate because they are what they are. They're, they're designed mostly for helping um, people, you know, change jobs and stuff. And that's something that they've been working to change. But it's not because of the quality of the material. Apparently it's because, you know, People don't have time or they don't, they get into it and they, they, they let them in pretty easily. In fact, it got stricter. They got stricter about allowing people to even apply now because they want to make sure you're going to at least try. Um, essential names, new administrator. Okay, she was master's. Look at master's from WGU. Lee Finner receives her master's from WGU, a master's degree in curriculum instruction. This is, I thought about getting a teaching degree, but no. <laughs> it's like if I ever got a teaching degree, it would be about the psychology. That's the thing that interests me the most is the psychology of learning, the neurology of it. I can do my own research on that. College and school brief, Megan and Township was named blah, 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 Falls Dean's List. She may okay. So again, usually the WGU is a bunch of a bunch of success stories. Uh, I did read one that said that the former um, president of WGU is now running for governor or something. No, it's headed. It's it's the board of education. I think it's the chair of the board of education in North Carolina, which I thought was really coincidental, because you know I've been talking about it a lot, and I live here in North Carolina. Hacking. What do we got? Facebook's Twitter and Instagram accounts hacked. Well, that's not news. By Saudi group. I, if I opened up every single hacking story, we'd be here all day. Uh, Will City, Lucidly lifted or grabbed uh, Liverpool the alleged hacking scandal. No. Nope. Campaign denies hacking claim. I mean, every every time somebody comes here every week, they say, oh, I got hacked again this week. Oh, my Minecraft got hacked. Oh, this got hacked. Anybody thinks that we're not in dire need of cybersecurity people? Yeah, particularly red team, pen testers, so they can clean it up. Attackers attack official Facebook accounts again. Uh, turmoil Iowa caucus. Well, I already, let's see. I already covered the Iowa caucus. If you don't know, they didn't get hacked, but... E-voting is still a bad idea, and we already I already covered that, and we concluded the same thing. Um, cell phone hacking, this is a different thing. That's like, well, it's hack. There's hacking and freaking. It's different. Hackers prey on coronavirus. Yes, this is a, this this comes up in the news a lot. So if you get people are using the coronavirus stuff to fish all kinds of people, you know, no news there. The 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 news is, hey, hackers use the news of the day. That's the most scary to fish you. The end. If you're a hacker and you're a black hat and you want to get people to click on a link, do that. It's a social engineering strategy. Uh, if not, you should know about it and not do it. Labor Party says, uh, one of the reasons um, this is so good, this uh, ProtonMail is so good, is if I click on a link, I have to confirm. I wish I could force this do not ask to never appear. And then if you're working with a non-technical person, you can say, look, never ever go to a site make sure you look at the year before you go so protonmail forces you to look at the site you're going to so at least that can help protect against phishing so i'm going to close this i mean if, if google just added that one thing if google just said look at the links you're clicking on dork you know and forced you to opt out of that it would save so many fish attacks but they won't because they want to make it easy but the thread ripper oh boy Look at this. Thread River on Linux. I don't have a lot of time, but I got to look at this one. Oh my God. Look at this, guys. Wow. The absolute best single socket workstation performance on Linux that has already been the Thread Ripper 3970X that has outperformed the likes of the Core i9. The Thread Ripper is, is killer. I just. 32 cores. This is 64 cores. 
Do I need to make my case about learning a language that's really, really easy to concurrently program in? To write concurrent programs? What is the single best language? Python has seven libraries, they all suck. JavaScript can't even do multi-core. They're scrambling really fast to tack it on like everything else. Node. Uh, Rust multi-thread, no green threads. And they're just as hard as they were in C and C++, which is why everybody hates concurrent programming in those languages. Go, absolutely elegant, easy, as easy as making processes on your Unix machine. So, so there you go. Um, System76 for coordinating, oh my gosh. I, I'm really hoping, oh look at that. Look at that system from System76. I hope they do better. I do. I hope the System76 grows into a company that has a decent custom ser customer service department. They sucked before. I mean, they were really bad. Like in 2013, I, I, I refused to do anything with them. I bought a system. I returned it because I bought a different one. And they're like, oh, you've got a scratch here. And there's no scratch anywhere. They gave me a whole bunch of shit. I was like, I'm never doing business with this company again. And I was already kind of sensitive because I did, I bought something from, oh God, what's that horrible, horrible company? Um, I buy power. Anybody who buys anything from I buy power, I, I, I totally pity you. Um, it came, it didn't work. Well, it's shifted in shipping. You got to take it apart. You got to take your, you know, small form factor computer apart and fix it all and reseat the CPU. I'm like, fuck that. If I had, would Apple tell me that? Sorry, I swore. I'm not supposed to swear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to figure out how to bleep. I, I definitely need to figure out how to bleep because this is going on YouTube. All right, um, back to the news of the day. This is super fun. I've spent a lot of time in my Linux notifications, which is a problem. Element OS has a bold new plan for Linux app developer. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Oh, elementary. I think... Um, yeah, elementary OS. Elementary OS kind of makes your Linux look like a look like a Mac. Four main goals, and I guess they have must have a company around them now. I don't think this is going to go anywhere. To tell you the truth, not with. Um, they're trying to make it super easy. Now that's just a marketing. That's just marketing press. They probably paid Forbes for that. Um. Not not impressed. I I think uh, Endeavor OS has more of a future. Endeavor OS. Look it up. It's the new Arch. It took over from Anteragos, which died. So, um, uh, Makulu Linux Lindos offers Windows Comfort Zone, but all it's all Linux under the hood. Never heard of it, so I have to click it. I kind of think it's just another edgy side. Lindos. Lindos? Really? Where's this news coming from? Uh, so it looks like they're okay. Well, that's not ugly. Everybody always puts transparency to sell stuff, even though nobody actually uses it when they're, unless they're being silly on stream. It's horrible for your eyes. There will come a day when you'll throw out your transparency, I promise you, <laughs> if, you if you're using it right now. Um, you know, any effort to make Linux look like Windows is misguided. Sorry. End. End of story on that. You know, why don't you do things that make it look like Mac, if anything? Okay. Um, kernel adding support for first gen Echo, Amazon Echo, many other ARM editions. Ooh. Wait a second. Um, One dollar coin. Um, Linux 5.6 Linux kernel support for first generation Amazon Echo. Does this mean you're going to be able to take over your Amazon Echo and put Linux on there? Hmm. It will if they're doing GPL3. We really need to find out if um, what Amazon's position on GPL3 is. I really need to blog about that. To do um, find out Amazon's position on GPL3 B3 with regard to uh, Alexa, for example. I gotta do that, that's that's a big deal. Um, all right, so, do, 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 leave a computer, pine, clarify, do, 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 do. 
Well, this seems to indicate that they're, yeah, this seems, this is good. This is good news. Huh. Okay. That doesn't look like old news. I can't tell really. It's, it's Pharonix, whoever this, I don't know who, I should probably research who they are. I like knowing my sources. Um, uh, do, 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 networking dev kit. MD Linux drivers prepared to better support modern OL OLED supplies. That's nice. That's Pharonix again. Uh, Linux Mint, Linux Ready, uh, Mini PC. Oh. How many times is it? I'm running out of time. But the Linux stuff is what I really want to focus on. Let's, let's see. One system is rugged. Sys 427 Mini PC based on the new 3.5 SBD. Oh, wow. Do they have a... Ooh, this is fun. I have to show this to Gabe, my guy who's working at the solar energy place. Wow, this looks really nice. It's like a it's like a beefed up Raspberry Pi. An SBC, right? Single board computer. That's what that's what they're called. Um Wow, that and then came. No. I just need to know about it. I can't I can't read about it anymore. I've got stuff to do. Um that just means the SBC world is getting much better. SBCs are all getting stronger. They all have ARM on them. So the SBCs are getting smaller and they're getting more powerful and able to put in different things. So the thing to learn is Linux on ARM. If you want to be an IoT, learn Linux on ARM. I'm convinced. System76, the AO major Ubuntu Linux desktop gets draw dropping 64 core AMD Ryzen. Again, every time I see a multiprocessor, I think, oh, thank God goes my favorite language. Doing concurrent programming in other, any other language is absolute torture compared to Go. This is a freaking awesome computer. Oh, how much is it? Please tell me it's not like $9,000, I bet it is. This looks like they're competing with the Mac Pro here. The new Mac Pro, the whole 10 grand computer for rendering, I bet you they are. You know, like like, like Blender and, and all that stuff that takes rendering power. That's the only reason to put a Threadripper in it. I bet you that's what this is. I bet you this is a direct a, a direct competitive move against um, against max dominance of the industry, and there's a lot of people in that industry who are giving up on um, their 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 move into Linux. They're throwing Windows out. I mean um, Mac out. Thank God. Six thousand dollars. That's not see see. Look at this. God damn it. Look at this. Six. This is what with Jack with with taxes. What seven grand. Compared to the ten or the eleven or twelve grand that you have to pay for the Mac Pro, once you get you get like all that power. So I, I tell you what, if I ever get five hundred subscribers, <laughs> maybe I'd buy one. Right now though, I can stream just fine on my little eight megabyte RAM four core Triton MSI for nine hundred dollars, eight or nine hundred dollars. So there's really no need for me to get this. I'm not going to be doing high end um, graphics rendering. Now they're just showing off. I love that comment. <laughs> so, System76 positioned them as, as the as the you know the the Linux hardware manufacturer probably in 2013 when they're really tiny and I think they're in, in Oregon somewhere, probably Boulder. And that was my first experience with them, and it was very negative um, because I it clearly wasn't the right solution for me based on the price. So, I got something else and returned it and had a horrible horrible customer experience with them. They charged me an extra $70 just to repackage it. They tried to, I was like, you know what? Apple wouldn't have done this. You know, Dell hasn't done this to me. Um, Dell has problems too, but not nearly as bad. And so I want to forgive them, but I got lesson. Here's a lesson. If you're a company, the lesson is if you really, really burn somebody in a customer service experience, it takes every ounce of ethical energy and moral fiber in me to forgive you. So I got some Chris P's going on there. Your voice is crusty, crusty, crusty. Are they, are they too crisp? Are they too crisp? How about now? Is that better? Crunchy, crusty. I have a crusty voice, huh? That's what you're going to call me? Crusty? Maybe it's because I was talking like this. How about that? Is that better? Um, this is a problem with having a mic where you have to stay in the same place the whole time. Um, I turned down the I turned down my trouble. This board is a piece of crap, so I have a new one coming. Um, yeah, appreciate the feedback. So seventy six. 
Um, here we go. What's next? I should probably put my monitor back on, even though I don't like that during this. Okay. OBS. This is why I watch my, my audio mixer. I mean, yeah, that'll have to just do. All right. Back to Linux. What were we doing? We were looking at Linux systems. I'm not going to make it through this. Linux based set top box market growth is skyrocketing. Wow. So set top boxes in Linux are going crazy. Do you need any more justification for learning Linux? Do I need to say more that Linux is the dominant platform for the future? Research finds Linux and Mac OS sudo bug impacting PWD feedback option. Um, I'm not going to talk about this bug other than to say that it's a bug and sudo has been infected for over seven years, giving root access to people. So we can read about that. It's, it's disastrous. Um, so forever, you know, the, we'll talk about that at some point. I, I don't know if I'm going to dig, dig into that. I need to stick with, you know, learning and skills rather than deep dives into what I think about stuff. There's a lot of other you know, streamers that cover that stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm interested in it, but I just not enough to overcome the goal I have to helping you guys, you know, learn to code and stuff. Linux Pro Magazine, available both in print. Oh, that's cool. Linux System Administrator, mid. So this is a job posting. All right. Um, all of those things can tie. Although, you know what? There, if it's got good news in it, I'm going to put it in my weekly news thing. Like that stuff about the System76 system is really cool. Offensive security. So um, you can't put all... I haven't figured out anyway how to do things for different keywords. Russians said to Turkey for talks in Syria about offensive. That's not the same thing. The 10 best cybersecurity TED Talks for practitioners. Oh, that's nice. A look at this BIOS UEFI offensive security research team. This is what I was talking about the other day. So um, there's a problem... I'm a, I'm a bookmark this. Um, there's a, there's a problem with UEFI booting and the hypervisor that allows you to have like to bypass any of the security on boot. So that's the thing. Um, I think the, the, the sort of protocol for these new things is going to be for me to give one liners on the thing and then, and then kind of, send you off on your own research if you want to do it because I don't have time. I'm like down to like 15 minutes. Um, cybersecurity. Israeli maturing cybersecurity startup ecosystem. That's no news. Israel has the best cybersecurity program of any country in the world. Better than Russia. Um, it, to, to, to read about that or to hear about that, go watch the Cyber War episode on Israeli security and their their class of, of military. There's a military uh mandatory military in Israel and there's a class of the military that is just cybersecurity and everybody that comes out of that it gets like million dollar jobs and cybersecurity experts it's pretty it's pretty clear that Israel was behind um, this is the primary actor um, no there's no evidence of this but it, that they were the primary actor behind the Stuxnet so you know it's one of the most amazing hacks of all time it probably it launched us into warfare through cyber war I mean like actual warfare Stuxnet um, broke the uranium accelerators and caused them to overspin and took over the control consoles so that people couldn't see it was happening. And that caused it to to die. Um, well, I'm pro ton now. Um, cybersecurity awareness with... Um, what have you know that? Cybersecurity awareness with Graham Coley. Um, listen and subscribe to our podcast. Um... Yeah, no. I mean, I might, but no. Cybersecurity framework in healthcare. This is a big deal. Healthcare is getting owned, and they do a whole Mr. Robot on this. It's really sad. Healthcare is really totally getting owned, and it's scary. Um, top seven cybersecurity trends in 2020. These are fun reports. Usually, they're usually trying to sell magazines, but um, that's probably worth zooming through real quick. Um, uncontrolled access to personal data, blah. Smart consumer devices, blah. The trend continues toward medical devices. Blah, I just said that. Vehicle and transport. Blah. Hackers target smart supplies. Okay, obviously. Threats to shipping are no longer just rhetorical. Okay, duh. Vulnerabilities in real-time operating systems could herald the end of the patch age. 
So this is attacking like CICD. I mean, this just wasted my time. Fuck you. I need to. God damn it. See, I'm gonna have to. to I can't YouTube stream. I have to learn how to bleep. Do you guys know how to bleep? If you hear a bunch of like clips in the thing, that's what I'm, I'm just gonna clip it. Clip all my swearing. This is a stupid ragazine. I'm gonna remember it because I'm never gonna go here again. Note to everyone: don't make clickbait crap that's gonna lose trust. Because when you do, I ain't never going back to you. You know, don't put stupid titles just to get me to click. Um, top seven trends. Yeah, we did that. Okay. Uh, unifies margin policy. CSA states the Senate more cybersecurity. Yes, of course. Duh. Best cybersecurity blogs of 2020. I don't trust you. Um, you can now... This is the thing. Anytime somebody has to say the best cybersecurity blogs, it's almost always an advertisement. Almost always. Sometimes it's not. Should we do this? Should we waste our time on this? If you waste my time, though... I had somebody get really mad at me on Skillstack for wasting my time. For wasting their time because I had some unfinished stuff and I, I committed after that moment to never put anything on Skillstack that's in a to-do state. And I'm i have since been stuck in revi revision mode because I need to do that. Um, the best cybersecurity, blah, 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 cybersecurity is training. Oh, yeah, cybersecurity is important. No shit. Um, Krebs on security, Trace on security blog. Those don't look too bad. I know about that. Wait, no, it's a different one. Tripwire I know about. Watchdog, I know about. What are your favorites? Um, well, I guess it's worth looking at. Okay, you got me. I'll bookmark that. Okay. And I gotta save my bookmarks. Yeah, I know. Yep, you got it. You got it. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Rainbow. And it bothers every. It bothers me. University of New Haven cuts ribbon on LS. No, wait. So this is another trend. All the, all the all the colleges are putting up big, huge press releases saying they're opening up cybersecurity centers, and it's like one little building in the corner that was not being used. <laughs> a lot of them, some of them, are dumping like billions of dollars into these big cybersecurity things because there's two ways colleges colleges are dying, and there's two ways that they're trying to attract people. One, they're doing esports. If you haven't seen this, it's amazing. You can get a degree, and then get a total scholarship for being an esports player. They're kind of throwing out traditional sports and taking on the esports because that's where the money is and two they're they're adding these cybersecurity centers so i see an email about a cyber new cybersecurity center going up like every week so that's actually good news if you're going to go to college because it means that the colleges care about it so it's not just carnegie mellon which is you know where has been rep reputed as one of the better ones for that but i i have no direct evidence of that that's true Okay, uh, Irving Law Firm hauls in 26 million to grow remote cybersecurity software. Well, that's from Dallas. I don't like anything from Texas. I'm sorry, except for Austin. Um, 2020 governance cybersecurity predictions. Hmm, who is Force Point? See this? This is clickbait all the way, and it's gonna work on me. Oh God, I hate graphic user interfaces. Okay. Um. You see how long it took that page to load? I'm not listening to your whole podcast. Sorry, guys. Um, and Force Point CTO is now going to talk to us about blah, 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 blah. I guarantee you they're clueless. <laughs> okay, talking about deep fakes, that's important. That's super important. If you don't know about that, you should go read, read go, 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 YouTube search deep fakes of, um, of, um, uh, there's a, have a conversation with a whole bunch of actors with deep faces exceptionally hilarious cyber the big big change cyber security predictions and messaging no, no, no. anyway you're not worth my time i'll bookmark you anyway just in case i have to find you again um all right uh craigslist founder grant helps at risk of cyber security nice nice um Bison Board joins the R Street Institute of National Security and Cybersecurity Senior Fellow. Who gives a shit? Um, I almost don't think I can post my news to YouTube. Maybe I'm going to make it like subscriber only <laughs> or something. I, just, I guess I can swear on YouTube since I didn't say I was for kids. Is that, can I do that? I don't know. Someone tell me. Um, pen testing. Uh, I like this one because it's more precise uh, method, message. 11.35, okay. Global pen testing market, 2020 demand growth trends, key findings. Hmm. 
This is probably more interesting. Actually, I found that my searches for pen testing are there's less hits, but they're almost always better. If you search for cybersecurity, which is this cliche, you know, overused word in the market, um, you get a lot of crap. So the pen testing is incorporated in analysis of different factors of augmenting. That's when I split by major companies. Yep, Rapid Seven. I thought, well, there's Rapid Nine too. You know about this, right? So, Wireshark. These are all. Why not security? IBM actually is a pretty good cybersecurity company. Huh. Um, this looks pretty good. I gotta read this. So I'm gonna mark that. Um, and what else am I doing? Hey, welcome to anyone who's joined. Um, and let's see here. What was I doing? I only have a few minutes left. So we did that one. Oh, that's the one I need to go look at. I wrote that in my notes, so I'll do that. Um, I probably should make a way to bookmark stuff so I don't have to write it in my to-do list. Get more efficient at that. Anyway, this is a good one. This is, this is worth looking at. Um, Cinco de Mayo, AWS, deploy confetti on Tuesday. No. This is the thing about real life meetups. I like knowing what's going on, but I never go <laughs> because it's too, too much of a waste of time. I'd rather be on stream with y'all, y'all. Um, quick union slower than quick find. What is this? Oh, this is, this is a, a problem. Somebody's trying to work out who's using Windows to code and go. So bye bye Um... If software engineering is in demand, why is it so hard to get so This is a Quora question. Sometimes I chime in, usually not. Linux, Unix, Caps, Runtime, I'll lock ahead. No, I'm not interested in fixing your problem. Uh, report says North Carolina home to one of the most dynamic life sciences. This is a this is a local rag to North Carolina that's very, very enterprise driven and uses and highlights people who are quote unquote serial entrepreneurs, which is stupid. But um, North Carolina home to one of the most dynamic life savings clusters in the US. This is true. In fact, um, if you want to do life sciences, it's not just here. There, there's, there's a place in, um, I want to say, Con no, that's not Con what is it? Um, I can't remember the name now. Oh, it's on the edge of my tongue. Rowan County that is really good. It's also got one of the premier um, solar energy companies uh, and centers of innovation all over around here in North Carolina. It's actually where they have, there's kind of a nexus between um, there's kind of a nexus between uh, solar energy and uh, you know the conservative and the the um, the liberals. They kind of agree on solar energy, so it's kind of fun to watch. The rest of that is junk. I don't want to read a lot. They were getting paid to promote it. You know, it's funny too because I have the local news station call me all the time or write to me and say, "Hey, we're gonna put it. We're gonna make a spot on you. You're gonna be on our morning show." And I'm like, "I don't want to be on your stupid morning show." Um. In the case of this particular benchmark, it is pointless to be pointing out the cost of individual malloc files. Okay, so that's probably a fun thread, but no time for that. See, the go without garbage collection thing is really important. I need to come. This thread has been really active lately because Discord, you know, shots fired. Discord made a blog that said that they got really, really fast when they went to Rust because they were comparing go 1.9 or at 1.14 now, and they didn't know how to turn garbage collective off in Rust. I mean, in Go. So that's completely naive in that whole, the whole go, go nuts group has just gone kind of, you know, politely crazy over it. And so now they're talking about garbage collection and go and blah, blah, blah. And 1.14 is notably slower. And so there's been talk about there. They haven't actually released it yet because the release candidate, everybody reported back. It was really slow. Uh, and that's all. You can get that all from just reading the list. JavaScript weekly. I'm going to save this. Do I have time? Ooh. The problem with JavaScript news is that it's really, really clickbaity because it's that the node community in general is very clickbaity very marketing driven, very flashy. Um, full size JavaScript control, calendar control, probably cool. It's a React, that's connected for React View and Angular. That's kind of cool. I'm going to always save this though, because there there's good stuff in here. How to make WebGL power mm, with 3JS. Well, 3JS and DS is cool. Uh, our most loved JavaScript course gets updated. It's a sponsor thing. If you want to do, well, I'm not going to talk about JavaScript courses right now. On the maintenance of large open source projects, I've written up blah, 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 blah. Node, Node is 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 largely been replaced. Nobody wants to admit that, but it's true. 
tiny helper, single purpose. On, I mean, if anybody wants to challenge me on that, maybe not right now, but if you can show me one thing you can do in Node that you can't do and go better, I would love to see it. Tiny helpers, single purpose online tools for web developer. I actually know of one thing, but I'll put that out there as a challenge. I was, I always talk about it whenever I talk about Node. The only time I use Node, or I have one exception, I'm not going to tell you. Um, otherwise, Node is useless. So there's not a single use that I have had anybody tell me for Node that can't be done in another language better. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. That's many, many companies go to go.dev and you can read all about the companies that have made that conclusion for themselves and changed their whole operations. Seven possible, including the creator of Node, by the way, <laughs> and the creator of Express. Um, seven possible good reasons not to use TypeScript. Well, I've stopped using TypeScript for a long time. This is a fun debate. It reminds me a lot of the CoffeeScript. Everyone was CoffeeScript crazy in the Node community. And um, then they suddenly weren't. <laughs> So they're very, very finicky. They're very, they're very fickle. The whole, the whole node community. It's very, it's very hard to follow it. I mean, this is where the term framework fatigue comes from because they're constantly changing their mind on what they're going to do. And they, frankly, they don't know what they're doing half the time. I'm sorry. That's just my take on it. Um, find a dev job through Vettery is probably good. Why JavaScript is eating HTML. This is fucking bullshit. And I'm going to put this in the thing because I'm going to take it on head on because this is killing the internet and they don't know why because they're idiots. This is the JS, JS, JS people. Oh, God damn. I'm so pissed. This is why I have to be careful when I open this email. Because the node people are dumb. They're dumb and they're doing things that are going to kill the web. And their th sad thing is, is that people are following what they say. So they need, there needs to be an active voice going out against them that's not afraid to say it like it is with facts. This, oh, God damn. This just makes me so angry. I'm just, sorry. I go down and take some coffee here. They're killing the web. And they don't even see how. And they haven't lived through a dead web like I did with XML and object oriented programming. So that one's going to get a response. But it's gonna, I'd, I'd rather build things that are better and prove it than fight against clueless node developers. Sorry if I've offended anybody, but this is my stream and that's how I feel. They don't even know why. And it's like, it gets me angry because because they don't do any research. I have no patience for intellectual laziness. If you're not doing your own research on why this thing, thing that you're about to do is bad for the internet, and you can't figure it out, then you've been irresponsible, and that makes me angry. So, back to inbox. Okay. Whew. All right, back. Where was I doing? Okay. So, let's see. Kubernetes week. Let's just see what's going on in Kubernetes land really quick. Full stream ahead on KubeCon, okay. Coronavirus update, okay. Child care is good for, what? Why would that be in KubeCon? The technical, uh, config sync for GTE, okay. Calico, Kubeflow, that's interesting. What is that? The development delivery platform. They're putting AI in, into their container deployments. <laughs> that's interesting. Docker donates to Knab. These people tend to over-engineer shit. Azure Kubernetes, so you have Node on the one hand, and then you have Kubernetes on the other. Um, secure best practices, it's probably worth a read. Rolling updates in blue, green, deployments of Kubernetes. Um, I'm going to save this, because but I'm not going to read it right now, because I can't get distracted on the Kubernetes thing. One of the survival techniques I have is that I only surface every once in a while. Um, high viable when... Um, uh, when I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with Kubernetes. So what I'll do is the week that I'm starting to get into Kubernetes, I'll surface, I'll go back and read all the news and search it. All this news, by the way, that I'm saving is stored on my hard drive and I can go access it with MUT and grep it. So I can search it from the command line. And so what I'll do is I'll go back and read all the mail for a given thing. Because sometimes reading a bunch of mail about a thing that's not priority for you to use right now uh, can distract you. And by the time you actually get to deploying or using the thing, the whole landscape has changed so much that you need to get up to date on it. So it's good to actually go, go, go into it at that time. Yep, Kubernetes is definitely good. It's won the war. Um, I have fairly complex structure in my Mongo driver. Nope, I'm not doing that for you. That's a support call. Sometimes I'll chime in on those, but lately. Oh, what's that? Oh, I thought you were talking about Kubernetes. I haven't, I haven't seen that. 
Um, how do you feel about using variadic functions and options? That's not something for me. Reading data from a small number of partial partial files in parallel. Interesting, but no. Get your first job as a self-taught developer. This this Quincy, I'm going to save my rant for free code camp another day. Um, they this is a guy who was a, as it was a school administrator who attended a single boot camp, decided his company would be a company that had free code camps for everyone. He has no experience as a professional developer, and he's now he claims to have millions and millions of people who've gone through the program. All 40 people that I sent through the program that I tested on the first certificate couldn't even make a web page. It's a fail, and I hate, hate, hate saying that. I gave it a shot. I spent a full semester investing time having my people go through this and helping them, and it was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. It doesn't even have basic comprehension of how people learn through repetition. It's a massive fail, and the, the only one that's worse than this is Code, is Code Academy. You might get a few tips and things like that, but you won't learn it. You're not going to learn it. And they have big apologetic um, posts about how to get a job and how to actually do things. And he's actually, they press, they press Quincy on Quora about this. And he goes, well, obviously you can't get a job unless you do a lot of work and you do a lot of things. Well, why don't you just do that in the first place? So I'm going to save that rent for another day, but I'm definitely going to put that here. Um, I know his heart is in the right place. He writes posts about how poor he is and how he, you know, this takes a lot of time and effort. And then he goes down for f a full fucking week and can't answer it. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, all the people on this thing think it's okay to apologize and be down for five days. What if Amazon went down for five days? So it's, it's, a, it's a completely, you know, touchy-feely approach to it. And it's not industrial strength. And, and I, feel, I feel sorry for people that waste their time on it because some of this stuff is wrong. I will, to give him credit, his JavaScript stuff is the best stuff out there online. So because they, they've actually updated it to cover ES6. Nobody else has. Code, Code Academy, as far as I remember, hasn't even still updated theirs. Anyway, I'm done with that. I'm out of time. I've got to go. Um, that's all the news for today. I'll bundle that up and we'll go forward. I'll try to end on a lighter note next time. Um, and I might I might come back tonight and finish up the news um, because I need to get through this and I don't know if, if we're going to be able to do it. So uh, it's great talking to you all. Have a nice day. <laughs>